just, I'm going to go ahead and get it out of the way. I mowed grass the one day it didn't rain last week, and it was this tall, and it about killed me. So <clears throat> I don't have anything other than the allergies I've had for 48 years. Um, but it got me pretty good this time. Uh, so I appreciate your prayers as I fight these goofy allergies. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit this morning about some things uh, that mothers are. Uh, it is Mother's Day. Uh, do have um, some things, uh, some scriptures to read about mothers. Um, also, at the end of the service, uh, the church has uh, got a little gift for each uh, lady here today. Um, as we're going to learn at some of our po uh, our points here, uh, I understand that you know Mother's Day is celebrating mothers. Uh, but some of the charges that I'm going to give to mothers today are for all ladies. Uh, you know, it's up to God whether a lady becomes a mother or not. Uh, but all women are charged with some tasks from God. So we want to honor every, all the ladies here today. Uh, after the service, if Dave or a Pat has um, $5 gift cards to Dairy Queen, uh, which, by the way, you can get a large blizzard for less than $5 at Dairy Queen. So... Uh, Dave has the dairy, or Pat has the Dairy Queen cards, and Nick has a $5 card to Dunkin' Donuts. Some folks may rather have coffee or something, some may rather have ice cream. You can take your pick, ladies. Uh, see Nick if you want Dunkin' Donuts. See Pat if you prefer to have um, Dairy Queen. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, and to uh, Pat and Nick, I've counted the cards. I know how many there are. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so this morning we're going to look, we're going to talk about some things uh, that mothers are. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 uh, is where we'll have, get some of our first uh, verses from this morning. But I want to look at one of the things, or the first thing that mothers are. Uh, the Bible teaches us that mothers are to be obeyed. Ephesians 6, 1, 1 through 3 says, Children... Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And notice that parents is plural. You know, I know a lot of folks or some families that are families that I've been familiar with <coughs> growing up and, and in my life. I remember the famous saying, you wait till your dad gets home. <laughs> Anybody ever heard that other than me? <laughs> I heard that. But you know what? That didn't, that, it shouldn't have had to come to dad coming home. Mothers are to be obeyed. Uh, as well. And sadly, in the world in which we live, in a lot of families, mothers is all there is. Uh, their dads just aren't, where, aren't anywhere to be found. But it says, obey your parents in the Lord. Verse 2 says, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. <clears throat> Colossians 3.20 says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Now, there are, there, there, there is a um, group of folks that would, and even, and even in some churches, would preach or teach that women are second-class citizens. Um, and, and I don't agree with that at all. I don't, uh, I believe that's wrong. Uh, I, God does set up a, uh, if we want to call it, chain of command in, in the house and, and in the church and, and everywhere. Uh, but uh, women, uh, mothers, are to be obeyed just like uh, the fathers are. Uh, Proverbs 1, 8 through 10 says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace on thy head and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Uh, and we can not only see the command from the Bible, but we can see that uh, the example that Jesus set. Jesus obeyed his mother. Uh, Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 49 says, And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. 
But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. It says he was subject to them, talking about Mary and Joseph. Uh, he listened to his mother. Now, he was in the temple teaching. He said he was about his father's business. They didn't understand. Rather than try to explain and prove that he was right, what did he do? He obeyed his parents. He obeyed his mother and father, and he went with them. And he increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with man and God. Uh, if, if, uh, young people, if you would like to increase in wisdom and in favor with God and man, listen to your mother. Honor your mother and father. Not only are mothers to be obeyed, but mothers are to teach. And you're not just mothers, but all women. If you look in Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Uh, we'll start in verse 3. Verse 1 kind of deals with men a little bit. Or verse the, the, verses 1 and 2. But verse 3 says the aged women. What is an aged woman? We're not, I, I don't know that there is an age. Uh, it's someone that is older. I would think that in children's church, uh, the teenagers or young adults that's in charge of the little kids would be an aged woman to the little kids. Uh, to the um, 20s and 30s, uh, women that are older than them would be an aged woman. So I, I believe that the circumstance would define the word aged, if that makes sense. Uh, it says the aged woman also, or women likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, and the word of God, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now, some of this isn't popular, but it's Bible. If you want godly results, then we have to do things God's way. Aged women are to teach the young women, not to try to be like the young women, not to try to talk like the young women, not to try to act like the young women, but to teach the young women. And they're supposed to teach them <coughs> some very specific things. Now, what the world would want uh, 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 ladies to teach the young ladies and believe is different than what the Bible teaches uh, uh, an aged woman to teach the younger. The world would want them to teach that there's nothing more important than your career. Nothing. Uh, the world would want them to teach that you have no need for a man in your life. You can do everything without him. They also would want you to teach that you can do everything that a man can do. And they would teach a young woman to be a competitor, not a completer, as the Bible teaches. Let's look at these verses, though, and see what God wants the aged woman to teach the younger. It's to be sober. The first listed there in verse... Uh, four. To be sober. So I just went to the dictionary and I looked up sober. And it says not drinking too much. But you know what? There's other definitions of sober. It says temperate. Having a show, having or showing a serious attitude. Having a plain collar would be, would be having somber clothes. Now I don't know that that definition has anything to do with the verses here. But <coughs> not only should the aged woman teach the young ladies... Not to uh, uh, overindulge in alcohol uh, or to drink, but also to be of a serious attitude. Um, I, I know that life's serious and sometimes life's sad and we should have fun, but there's a time to be serious. Uh, there's a time uh, to, to focus and to concentrate, maybe to get a task done. Uh, there's a time to be sober. Uh, oftentimes, though, you see, or I, I've seen in the past anyway, um, <coughs> ladies that are uh, in some type of leadership role over young girls, whether it be a Sunday school teacher or a, a youth director or a school teacher or something like that. Oftentimes you see those uh, uh, teachers or those ladies in these positions 
trying to act like those they're supposed to teach. Uh, they'll try to dress like them. They'll try to use the new language that they use. They'll try uh, uh, to be more of their friend than their teacher. Uh, uh, and all it is, it, the Bible does call us to be friendly. And you do get uh, uh, catch more bees with sugar uh, than you do vinegar. Uh, we're, we're first and foremost to be teachers. Sometimes uh, uh, instruction isn't enjoyable. Sometimes it's no fun. That doesn't mean that the instruction doesn't need to be there, though. So uh, after sober, it says to love their husbands. And there's there's definitions of that all over the place. Uh, but if we look, read in Scripture, uh, this, the, the Asian woman is supposed to teach young ladies how to love their husbands, how to love their children. How to be discreet. I looked that one up. Discreet. It says apart or detached from others. Separate. Distinct. The sentence it said uh, something may have six discreet parts. It means to be different. Hey, a lot of times, oftentimes, especially out in the world, they'll want to teach you, you have to fit in. If all the other girls are wearing this, you have to too. If all the other girls are willing to do this, you need to be too. And that's not what the Bible teaches. Ladies, we're going to teach the young girls to be discreet, to be different, to be separated. After discreet, it says chaste. Now, this says not having any inappropriate relationship, uh, nature, or intentions, to have a clean mind without unnecessary ornamentation, simple or restrained. Now, I'm not against. Uh, I'm not against makeup and earrings and things and make somebody look nice. I'm not against that at all. But sometimes, ladies will put more focus on that uh, when they're getting ready to go somewhere. Uh, and let's take church for an example. If if you take, uh, and guys, this is for all of us. If you take more time to prepare your body to come to church than you do your spirit, would you agree with me that there's a problem? You're not just... You're dressing up for people to look at instead of coming to honor God. Now, there's nothing wrong with looking nice. There's nothing wrong with smelling nice. Uh, but our focus should be the inside, not the outside. Um, if if I've got um, 50 or $60 to put out or $100 to put out for uh, my hairdo or my fingernails, but I don't have um, any money to help a, a missionary or... Or uh, someone in my church that I know is struggling, or even pay my tithes, <clears throat> there's a problem with that. There's a problem with that. There's nothing wrong with with taking care of yourself, but you can't. We can't make our bodies more important than God. After chaste, it says keepers at home. Now this causes a lot of grief for some folks. Some folks will preach that keepers at home mean you're not supposed to go anywhere. You're supposed to. You're not supposed to have a job. You're not supposed to do anything. Uh, all you're supposed to do is, is is take care of the house, and that's not necessarily what this means. If you look over in Proverbs 31, and, and the Bible describes uh, the Proverbs 31 woman, uh, she's a worker. She works hard, but you know what? Her job's not more important than her home. That's the difference. Um, keep her at home. It is the mom. Uh, or the ladies, and I know I'm, somebody's going to throw something at me. Uh, it's their responsibility to keep the house. Now, it doesn't say anything about that dad and sons can't help. You're, they're supposed to help. We're supposed to do things together. But ultimately, that's where the responsibility lies of the house is on. And the old aged ladies are supposed to teach the youngers, hey, this is important. This is important. Again, keep her at home doesn't mean you can't work outside the home, you can't go anywhere, you can't participate in anything else. That's not what it means. What did Proverbs 31 lady do? She had she had her uh, uh, her purple and she sold it and she took care of the field and she took care of animals and she took care of her family, but she made sure she was a keeper at home. And it says good. Obedient to their own husbands. And that's another one that Leaves a, a bitter taste in some folks' mouth. And a, a, some of the problem uh, that they have that bitter taste is because husbands didn't know how to be a husband worthy of being obeyed. But the commandment's not about worthiness. It's about doing what God's asked us to do. Why? Why does God want the aged women to teach the young ladies to be 
uh, sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, to be chaste, to be keepers at home, to be good, to be obedient to their own husbands. Why does he expect this? Well, the verse is in saying that the word of God be not blasphemed. Hey, God's told us several times in his Bible, if we do things his way, we get his results. When we do things our way, we get what we, we reap what we sow. Mm. Lastly, mothers are to be an example. 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting verse 1, says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembered of thee in my prayers day, uh, uh, night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Now, he's, he's talking to Timothy here. Uh, and he's, 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 he's mentioned all these things. He wants to see him. He's happy. Why? Look at verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. He's, he's glad to see Timothy wanting to follow after Christ. Where did Timothy learn this? And finish the verse that says, The unfeigned faith which is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. Who taught Timothy to be godly? His mother. Who taught Timothy's mother? Her mother. Although God made man to be responsible and accountable for his family, mom can pass on the gospel, even if dad doesn't. Now the Bible gives us pretty, pretty clear direction not to be unequally yoked. Believer with unbeliever. You know, some folks will take that unequally yoked and they'll try to apply it to a lot of different situations that it says believer with unbeliever. And part of the problem is uh, you, you can't have two um, steering wheels trying to guide a family and end up going the right direction. So some, some moms have um, swam against the current their whole life trying to teach their kids to be godly. Trying to, have you ever noticed that oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes if a believer is unyoked with a believer, it's usually mom that's the Christian and dad that needs to, to, to accept Christ. I can't think of very many situations in my own life, uh, folks that I've known where the man was the Christian and the wife was not. It's usually a Christian lady and an unsaved man. Um, but it's okay, it's necessary for moms to be an example to teach their children whether dad is or not. Uh, Eunice and Lois taught Timothy how to follow Christ. It says, um, it says that it was for, it first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother, you, mother Eunice. I would even say that Lois, grandma, helped teach Timothy. You know, our job doesn't stop as parents when our children move out. It just gives us new opportunities as grandparents to help parents train our grandkids. Um, what can we give our mothers? I know Mother's Day has become commercialized. Uh, I read somewhere on the internet that um, Anna Jarvis, uh, after she started Mother's Day and got it recognized, <clears throat> actually filed a lawsuit to try to stop a Mother's Day celebration because people were trying to sell uh, white carnations to make money, which the white carnation, I guess, was a symbol of uh, uh, that she chose as a symbol for Mother's Day. But they were, they were making money off of what she wanted to be a holiday to just remember mothers. So it's become commercialized. Uh, I'm sure if you've been in any stores or saw any advertisements, you know, there's jewelry advertisements, there's flower advertisements, there's all kinds of advertisements of what you need to, uh, to buy mother for Mother's Day. Uh, chances are, unless, uh, unless you got a, a necklace or something you wear all the time, I would venture to say that some. if I ask you what you got for Mother's Day five years ago, some, you may not be able to tell me that. 
If I ask you what you got for Mother's Day 10 years ago, you're probably not going to be able to tell me that. I tried to ask some ladies. Uh, I didn't want to just uh, get the ink pen or the bookmark or the same thing that it seems like we pass out every Mother's Day. So I asked some ladies. I said, well, of all the uh, different churches you've been to and, and activities, what what is the most remembered gift you've got from a church at Mother's Day? I, I, I can give you answers. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I remember we, used, we might have got bookmarked. I think we got a pen one time. It, it's, not, it, it's not very memorable. So to make it so commercialized, uh, and we don't even remember sometimes. Now, I'm sure if you got a new car for Mother's Day, you probably remember that you got a new car. Uh, but oftentimes, we, we forget. So I thought, coffee and ice cream, or donuts and ice cream, what better can you give mom for Mother's Day? But what can we give our mothers? Uh, something that uh, they'll remember, something that uh, will make their life easier, something that will help them. And the single most thing I can think of that we could give our mothers this morning, uh, and some of us have already given our mothers this, is peace. So peace, what do you mean peace? There's peace for a mother in knowing that her children are saved. Not just saved, but prepared to stand before God. You want to give your mother something for Mother's Day today? Live your life in a way that she doesn't have to have any question where you're going to be if you don't wake up in the morning. Live your life in a way that your mom knows all those years I prayed for my son or my daughter have paid off because they're living for God now. Live your life in a way that your mom can have peace knowing that her children walk with the Lord. You can't do that if you're not saved. I could probably go around the room and I would, I would, I would, I venture to say I would be pretty safe in saying that there's probably some moms that have prayed for their children for years. Some have seen them uh, get saved, and some are still waiting, maybe, to see their kids get saved. Hey, listen. Pray for your kids. Children, I don't care how old you are, if you've got a mom, you're a children. Your mom's prayed for you. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's everybody. There's no exceptions. There's no uh, maybes. There's no hope so's. Uh, we've all sinned and come short. The Bible says that if we die in our sin, that we'll spend eternity in a place called hell. That's not popular preaching today. But you know what? I didn't write it. God did. The Bible also says that if we, if we uh, uh, accept Jesus' free gift of salvation, uh, if we believe in him, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, that will be saved. And that's for everyone. So we can be saved this morning if you don't know that, so that heaven's your home. You say, we talk about that every Sunday. You know what? I have to. I have to. There's nothing more important to preach than Jesus is coming and there's an expectation of you at the end of your life. If you're not saved, the Bible says you'll spend eternity in hell. I've heard testimonies from folks. I've heard people say, I've just been saved all my life. There's no such thing. If you believe you've been saved all your life, you're as lost as lost can be. The Bible teaches us that we're born in sin. It's the default. We all have that problem. And until we make that uh, 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 decision, until uh, the Holy Spirit draws us and convicts us of our sin, and we accept Jesus' gift of salvation, that's when we become saved. Not by doing good works. Not by paying money. Not by doing religious uh, uh, ceremonies. But by putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ alone. As a piano player comes and the <clears throat> song leader comes. We're going to have a song of invitation. If you're not saved this morning, what are we waiting on? We have no idea 